Hello there and welcome to today's session. Uh, my name is Dr. Anthony Cliff and I'm going to talk you through the first part about using NVivo to transcribe your data. So currently as of January uh, 2020, we're currently on NVivo 12 Pro and the version is 12.0.6. So make sure you've got the latest software up uploaded onto your system. Although saying that there's not that much difference between NVivo 11 an older copy, you can get hold of that compared to NVivo 12 Pro. Um, they look very similar, they do the same things. There's just some little tweaks here and there, um, but nothing to worry about. But if you can be on NVivo 12 Pro, then, then great. So why you're in NVivo is it's a great qualitative tool to transcribe your data, um, look for patterns in the data, have different codes and, and themes to generate your data. And it's also a great way to sort through all your data as well. So, so typically you wouldn't just have one interview. You may have multiple interviews and certainly that may well span over different focus groups. You may be looking at policy documents. So it's a really great sorting tool. However, um, it isn't for everyone. Uh, qualitative researchers have different ways of going about things. Um, some of them will do absolutely everything in NVivo 12 and it's certainly set up to that. Uh, if you want to be fully digital, then NVivo is a great tool for that. Some qualitative researchers prefer to do everything on paper. Um, you know, they prefer to transcribe by themselves on paper, prefer to do all their coding on paper, and then put that into their into their work finally by uh, lifting that stuff up off a of paper and then put it into a Word document themselves. Um, all these people like me, I'm, I'm a a pragmatist, so I've mostly on the quantitative side, but I have used um, qualitative, I've certainly used NVivo over the past four years for various projects and certainly for my PhD. Uh, and I find it's quite useful as a tool to um, get your data into NVivo, so transcribing your interviews. I find it really useful for generating your codes um, and pulling the quotes out, but the actual generation of themes and, and sorting through your data I don't think it's very intuitive. I think there's better ways to go about it. And certainly I've used paper when I got to that bit. But, but for our tutorial bits, um, I'll talk through that with you, um, how I've personally gone about doing that. There's plenty of other tutorials on the web. Um, this is just my perspective as someone who isn't fully qual qualitative. And this is how I've used it as a pragmatist. Um, if you come from a stats background, then this is how I've gone about doing stuff. Uh, so you may well find it a little bit easier. So go ahead, open up NVivo 12, and you'll end up with something that looks like this. You want to click on blank project first and foremost, and you want to give it a title and a description. So typically when I'm doing any research, the title, um, I would have whatever project it is. Then I'll use a colon and then give it the, the pseudonym, the name that I've given this person, and then interview whatever number it was and the date. And in the description, I typically give it again, what projects it's attributed to, who I was interviewing, at what time and why. Because that's really important because say, typically you'll have more than one interview and you want to differentiate in the title. Is it an interview? Is it a focus group? Is it a field observation? And in the description, it gives you all that detail there so you don't get too lost. So just go ahead, give it a name and a description. So I've gone ahead and just give it a, a very simple name there in description. Here is where you can select where it's going to be saved. Um, NVivo by default places it in your documents folder. However, you can set one up if you've got a project running. You set up your own um, folder in there and then just save it in there. Just use the browse function there and then click OK. And this is the first time that you used NVivo. Once it's loaded up, um, here has a little quick start step guide. I do recommend that you look through that um, just to get yourself familiar with it. Um, if you want to skip that, just click the X there. Now here is our homepage of NVivo. Looks a little bit complicated. Now this looks a little bit more uh, sensible, I suppose, once we actually put some data in there, it'll actually come to life a bit more. But the first thing that we need to do and what we're concerned about is getting some data in here so that we can actually go about transcribing. But before I talk about that, 
I'll just show you some other things that NVivo is really good for. So while it's great for obviously importing your audio files for your transcripts, if you've already got a transcript or someone's been very lucky to, to do that for you, you can import that directly into here using these text files. If you've done a survey, you know, if you've got some Excel data or you've used SurveyMonkey or SPSS, so if you're looking at coding some open-ended uh, questions, then again, you can import that file from there into here to do that. If you've got any policy documents or you've taken any screenshots of any web documents or anything on the web, you can import it via EndNote, Mendeley, and if you're looking at... Um, some content analysis potentially on some um, academic work, you can import it from there. And if you've made any notes yourselves on Evernote, OneNote, and even emails, you can also import them using these really simple functions to put them in here. However, today we're focusing on the, the traditional qualitative aspect of research, which is our transcription of an audio file. So to do that, we need to click data and then files, and then we need to go and navigate to where um, that is so you may have saved it somewhere typically you might have recorded this on your phone or more typically as a standard practice is your dictaphone you would have saved that somewhere go ahead find wherever that is and then simply click on it and then click open and then click import and it'll take a few minutes or so for NVivo to upload that okay after a short while uh, this page will pop up again you want to give it name a description so that you know who it is, what type of data it is, is it an interview, focus group, etc. A description. So go ahead, give it um, a name and a description. So I'm just going to call it test and then test audio one. Um, if you click on audio, it tells you how long it is. So for this particular interview, this was 59 minutes and 27 seconds, which is around about on average. You can get a really good around about an hour an hour and 45 minutes an hour uh, you probably get enough data there so that's fine that's just for your general thingies and you're writing up in your results you'll want to discuss how long on average your um, interviews took then click ok and then this is it here now in our files so obviously if you have multiple uh, audio files they'll all be listed here in our home page so we need to go about transcribing that then so simply double click on the file and Vivo will recognize that it is an audio file. And now our audio tools pop up. And we see along the top here, this is our audio file. So some key things for you um, to highlight first before we start is make use of these functions here. Now, um, a really good transcriber can probably hold around 20 words before they have to pause it. Um, some people are fantastic touch typers and they can type as a, the person is speaking, which is great. But, you know, we're not all perfect like that. So what you can do is you can higher and lower the volume. You can slow down the playback speed of the voice. So I don't personally like this. Um, I tend to hold about 10 words. I'll pause it, write it and then carry on. But certainly people I've worked in the past really like to slow this down so it's incredibly slow speech so they can type as they go along so they're not having to pause and stop. Play around it, see what you think what works best for you. Some other tools here, you can go straight back to the start or you can skip in five second intervals. And obviously here we have our play and our pause button and our stop function. These are really important because when you play the audio file, a timestamp will occur. And if you ever stop it, it'll also stamp that as a timestamp. And I'll explain why that's important in a little bit. What you should make use of, however, is the hotkeys. So particularly F4. So F4 will play and pause your audio, but won't add a timestamp. So make real use of that. And as you find, as you're typing along, that using the F4 function is a lot easier uh, than having to go back and physically click the play pause button. So we need to transcribe. You need to understand what type of transcription you're going to do first. If you're going to do verbatim, then that means every single um, uh, pause, every inflection of speech needs to be recorded. So that's going to take a little bit 
longer um, if you're doing non-verbatim. So you're not concerned about how they've said it, you're just concerned about what they've said. Then in your transcription, remember that you don't include the ums and ers, you don't include the pauses, uh, you don't include any elements of laughter or anything like that. You're just richly recording the spoken word, what they've said. For novice researchers, a transcription of an hour of audio will typically take you between six and eight hours. Um, it's a very lengthy process. Um, some really, really good uh, transcribers can probably do two to three hours. Um, on a really good day, when I'm really getting into it, I've had loads of qualitative work, because you do get better the more that you do. Um, I can do around about four hours. So it does take a long time. I recommend that you do try and get it done in one go. Um, do it when you're fresh, do it when you've got no distractions, um, and then just go ahead. A nice quiet room, put some headphones on, um, and then work your way through it. But just like in my quantitative sessions that I've discussed, there's no easy way of getting data and research. It just takes a lot of time. You can pay people to do some transcription. However, it is very expensive. Um, quite often, I consult on projects, um, and I usually charge around about 120 per hour of audio. Um, so if you add that up over 60 minutes, um, that's quite a lot. Certainly for if you've got multiple interviews, um, and that's not charging them for actually doing any um, error or making it look pretty. That's just getting the work to them. So if you've got the money, then yeah, you can hire someone to do it. But part of the fun of research is actually going about doing it yourselves. So to transcribe, simply click the edit function on the right hand side, the little pen. Really, really important that that is ticked, otherwise you can't transcribe in NVivo. The next thing that you need to do is click the transcribe button here. This is the little play button and it has a little pen. Why this is important is because when you play and stop it, it's going to add a timestamp to it. So that's really good because if you ever look at the words that they said in that particular bit, it'll tell you whereabouts in that section. So you may stop it after every minute. Typically, I stop it after every question has been answered by my respondent. So I know if I want to listen back to that audio file, then that particular timestamp, let's say one minute to two minutes 50, is all about question one. I can go back to that part of the audio file and then listen to it if I wanted to see how they've said something or to clarify something. So, simply to go about, double click on your contents, you would click play, type as you go along, typically I listen for about 10 words, then I'll pause it, I'll use F4, I'll write what they've said, and then once I'm up to speed with that, I'll play it again, listen for another 10 words, type that out, and then pause it again, and so on and so on. If they finish the question, then I'll click stop, and I'll add a new timestamp, I'll add a new box underneath, and then do the same again right the way through until the whole process is done. So I'm not going to play this audio file because this was part of an active project. However, what I will do is I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to play the audio through a little bit. Um, and then it will look back to you in a split second what part of a transcript will look like. OK, so here's a very quick, brief um, look at part of a transcript. Obviously, this goes right the way through for, for an hour. But you can see here the timestamp. Um, so all the spoken word occur between 0 and 2 minutes 34. Here, AC is my initials, but you may well have those interview. I just find it's much easier to just use your initials as your typing rather than typing out interviewer all the time, every time that you ask a question. Um, and here is the initials, the pseudonym that I give um, my participants. Um, so I give this particular person AM, which is related to their name, which is also really important because obviously you'd be sharing your transcripts uh, in your files and potentially for publication. So you need to make sure that whenever you do anything like this, that no one can be identified. So, so particularly here, you know, this isn't this particular person. Um, I just give them a pseudonym, their own different name. Um, and as you see here, it's just the spoken word. That's just all I've done. Um, and then each question then moves on to a next little one here. So that's how that looks. 
one thing that I suppose this is really useful, this has popped up. And Vivo has a real bad habit of if you haven't saved anything for 15 minutes, just like this here, this will pop up and you need to click save. In a way, I suppose it's a useful feature, but it can also be very annoying, especially when you're transcribing and then that pops up every 15 minutes. But it's a good way to make sure that everything is saved. So typically, once you've gone through and you've transcribed your audio, then I will copy my, my personal preference is I copy and paste all of this across into a Word document. And therefore, I spell check, error check it, um, and then I'll put it back into here. So, for example, if I right click here, copy, paste that into a, a Word file, edit it, make sure it's correct. And then I would come right click, copy that bit, and then I would just right click and then paste. And then the new approved spell checked, grammar checked stuff will go in that particular box. Do the same for the next one and so forth. And it looks a lot neater. Um, you don't have to do that, um, but it's only a step that I do take and it makes it a lot easier. And certainly as you're going through and you're reading it, you're starting to get an idea of what that person's saying and start to think about generating your codes. And that'll look something a little bit like this. So part of a transcript here was a, was a focus group, so similar process. Um, and it looks something like this as a, a complete transcribed file. So place that into Word, error checked it all, spell checked it all. And as you can see, it's broken down by question and time. And then that's all in my original NVivo file. Really useful to do. And certainly if you spell check and error check it, at this part, at this stage, then when you come to insert your quotes into your research, it's already been done for you. One other thing to note is typically what I'll also do once I've error checked it, like there, make sure it's grammar, I'll then play the audio file back and then I will make sure that what I've written is what they've actually said. Because it'd be quite easy when you are transcribing to miss a word out here and there, and that could change the whole the whole meaning of their of their discussion. So make sure you error check it. Um, some people do it once, twice, three times. Again, it depends what type of qualitative researcher that you are. So that is how you transcribe your data, your audio file at least, in NVivo. In our next session, which follows on from here, we're going to discuss how to generate some codes. Um, why you do coding um, and then how to generate certainly in a thematic sense how to generate um, themes and how you would then potentially put that into your work so thanks for joining